Hello everybody and thank you much for watching, this is me Mr. P. In this video I will play a racing game while it's being streamed to my Samsung Deck setup from a Shadow Cloud gaming service and I will use this USB Logitech steering wheel to control the car and you can have the same setup for almost for free. Let's begin. What I mean by almost for free and a bit of more information about why I'm doing this video. I've already done a couple of videos showing you how you can push the USB signal from your home from your Samsung Deck setup to a cloud gaming service like Shadow PC using a virtual here server running on your Android device and then client running on the Shadow PC. In my case, it's going to be Shadow PC. And this kind of setup still works fine, but they, to have that working, you need to buy a license key to have a server working properly on your, Gal on your Galaxy device, on your Deck Dex setup. And that setup, like I said, is still working fine. But if, what if you don't want to pay the license? Do you want to pay, you don't want to pay $40 or so for the license? Well, there is a free version or almost free version as long as you have one of these. This is a Raspberry Pi 4, but in this video, I will use Raspberry Pi 02W just to show, just to prove the point that you don't need the fastest or most powerful Raspberry computer at this moment to basically have the setup. I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi 0, which is right now connected for power, and I have Ethernet connected just to get everything set up because everything setting up via Ethernet port or with a wired connection to the internet is much faster than doing Wi Fi. But everything after I got everything set up, the Raspberry Pi 0 to W will be used wirelessly to push USB signal from this steering wheel to a Samsung deck. First of all, you need to get yourself Raspberry Pi OS flash to a micro SD card. How to do that on your Samsung deck setup? I already done a video previously. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below for you to go and check it out and get Raspberry Pi. Uh, Raspberry Pi OS flashed into the micro SD card. So the next thing, we're gonna go into Termux. I'm gonna open the Termux and I'm gonna write the command, which is SSH Pi uh, uh, at 192.168.178. I think my Raspberry Pi is 38. A default Raspberry Pi uh, SSH password is Raspberry. And here we go, I'm logged in via SSH to a Raspberry Pi. A couple of things I've done just before recording this video is to change host name from Raspberry Pi to USB Pi just to know exactly which device is connected to my home network by going into a router settings. So first thing what we need to do, we need to update packages. Uh, to do that, we need to do apt. Actually, no, we need to do sudo space su and then write apt update. Run that, that's gonna be quick. Here we go, we have that one done. Uh, we have our packages updated. Step number two is um, to get tail scale account created. And that's basically a secret source for this to work. You need to navigate to tailscale, tailscale.com website. While you're there, you click on sign in or get started and create an account. I'm using uh, Tailscale uh, by a Google account, so I'm going to use Google account to log in. But you just you can create via Microsoft, Google, or using old-fashioned way, which is email and a password. So I'm going to go into download section, make sure it's Linux is selected, and this is a command we need to run. I'm going to take this or make a copy, go into Termux, make sure Termux is working. Click, left click and hold, and then choose paste, and press enter. And right now this script, this one line command will do a magic trick. So it tells us to installation complete and what we need to do is to run tail scale space up. Everything, by the way, needs to be done via sudo. So we're gonna type tail scale space up, and it's gonna give us URL. We're gonna click and hold, and choose copy. we we'll go in a browser, and then open new tab, paste that URL, and press enter. It's gonna say, oh, do you wanna connect? I'm gonna say, yeah, I wanna sign in via Google. This is my Google account. There is a chance the Raspberry Pi will get disconnected, so don't worry. And here we go, it says broken pipe, disconnection happened, that's fine, not a problem at all. So right now, if I'm gonna go back here, go up, up to my SSH command, and log in again, Raspberry. And now I'm just gonna wait for this to connect. And now if I write or type sudo, space IP, space ADDR, it's gonna give me a list of all the IP addresses the Raspberry Pi has uh, assigned to. It will be LAN, Wi-Fi, and tail scale. So let's quickly check. We have a VLAN, which is ending with 40, fine. We have a uh, Ethernet, we have ending with 38, and we have tail scale. Which... So we have that one going. Next thing, we need to install a virtual here server. We can go by into virtualhere.com. And once you're on this page, you hover over USB server and click Linux USB server. We scroll down and we're gonna use uh, under generic virtual here USB server builds, we're going to use ARM. We're going to right click and choose copy. And we're using that because if you go up, the trial version of the server will allow you to share one device without time restrictions if you're using one of the generic builds below. And that's how the trick is happening. While you're using one device with well, this build, it's going to be a limited time. 
Otherwise, I'm gonna, you're going to try to trial and error, like use a, a trial version on Android device, like in my case, it's Samsung Dex. Um, you're going to have 15 minutes, I think, or 10 minutes. Anyway, we're going to go here. We're going to write sudo space su. I'm going to click and paste that in and press enter. And, oh, no, 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 sorry. You go all the way at the top, at the front, and type wget space and then link. And boom, that is downloaded. If I'm gonna clear the screen and list, I can see virtual here, USB D A R M is there. First thing we need to do, we need to make sure that is executable. So it is chmod space U plus X and the file name. So we get like this. And right now it's executable. That means I can type dot slash VH and press enter. And boom, virtual here, USB server is running. Press control C to stop. That means it started, it's all fine. We're stopping that. Let's wait for this to stop. Come on, faster. And now we need to type this command, which is if we are already at the sudo level, uh, if you're not a sudo at the moment, you just type sudo space nano space slash etc slash rc dot local and press enter. Go all the way down to the end of the file just before exit and after the fy, you need to type cd space slash home slash pi double ampersand dot slash vh usb darm space double dash b and this command means that as soon as raspberry pi starts it will navigate into a cd folder or change directory into home slash pi and then we'll run this command under dash b dash b means it runs it run in the background this is this is similar like a startup file a startup folder with the windows where you dump the shortcuts inside the folder on the windows machine and it's just going to start all of these programs automatically this is pretty much the same thing Control X to close, Y to write, and Enter to accept. And that means it's ready. Next thing, what we need to do, we type reboot. And while it's rebooting, I will disconnect the wired connection. So right now, Raspberry Pi is all Wi-Fi. While this is happening, we're going to minimize this. This is happening, minimize this. I will go into the shadow and log in into a shadow instant. I've successfully logged in into a Shadow Cloud Gaming service. And next thing, what you need to do, you need to go and download Virtual Here client inside your cloud gaming computer. To do that, just type virtualhere.com. While you're on this page, you need to click on the clients. Scroll down until you see Windows or Mac. And I chose Windows client, 64-bit version. I got that one downloaded. And it's like a, stand, it's like a portable uh, executable file. You don't need to install it. You just download and run it, and it's going to work. So I had that one on my screen. So it says VHUI 64-bit. I will run that. And while it's running, I will right-click and specify the hubs. You are not going to see anything here. It's just going to be blank. What you need to do next, you need to click Add. And right now, you need to type the IP address followed by semicolon 7575. When you, and next step, sorry, you need to go and download the TailScale client for the Windows. To do that, you need to go into a TailScale website tailscale.com, navigate to the same page as we've done on a Raspberry Pi or while we were in DEX. Under Windows, you download this and install on your Cloud Gaming service. And make sure you log in with the same password as you did while activating Tailscale on the Raspberry Pi. So I already got that one as well. So if I'm gonna go on the right-hand side, click on there, right-click on a Tailscale account. Under Network Devices, I'll find my devices and one of them should say, USB Pi. I will click on that. It means that a IP address has been copied. Delete server.local and paste that in and click OK. And if I click OK and I get this message, it means that the Shadow PC and Raspberry Pi connected into one virtual home network powered by Tailscale. That's it. Fantastic. That's in. What I'll do next, I'm going to close that. Right click on this and choose. Uh, yeah, right click on this and make sure you select it or auto use all on this USB hub. That's what I did already. So right now, if I'll disconnect this adapter that I used to get the Wi-Fi uh, wired connection, it disconnects. Fantastic. Now I'm just gonna turn my wheel on. The racing wheel is turned on. Next thing, if I connect this into the OTG adapter to get the USB type A, the virtual here detected, automatically accepted the device and the wheel should start spinning. Bingo, wheel right now sending USB signal to Raspberry Pi 0 to W, which then via tail scale pushes all the way to a France data center a thousand miles away from where I live. And then virtual here client inside Shadow PC, uh, Shadow PC Cloud Gaming Service detects and automatically assigns to. Anyway, we're gonna go into Steam. 
and we're gonna go into my library of very poor games and I'm click on the set of Corsa and press play so we're gonna go into let's check if it actually works as you can see oh okay so it's already working we're gonna click on a single player and we're just gonna go and start the session I'm not gonna record the audio of the game just I don't want YouTube to start penalizing me for soundtracks or something so I'm just gonna leave the no audio on the game so right now I'm gonna go with this drive and now let's see if it's uh, okay, uh, strange. Let's go and select the wheel instead. I think that's what was the problem because the wheel wasn't selected. Because uh, I've done a bit of gaming of this using the, here we go. Ooh. And okay, I just spin the car. This is Right now, going to be not me demonstrating how amazing I am at driving. Uh, but this is more to demonstrate that the steering wheel works. As you can see, I'm changing camera position. Okay, where is my favorite camera angle? Okay, break. break. I forgot to lock the wheel. Oh my goodness, it almost fell off a desk. Okay, 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 okay. You see, I need some practice. I need some practice, but this video, like I said, is not to show showcase my amazing driving skills in Assetto Corsa. This is more to demonstrate that if you want to play a racing game inside Shadow Call Gaming Service and you have a steering wheel and you don't want to pay $40 for a license to run this via Android system, but you have somewhere Raspberry Pi lying around, this is perfect. Uh, I testing, like I said, with the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. I'm not sure how it's going to work with the original Z Pi Zero. I tried with the Raspberry Pi 3 and it worked great, it worked great. Not sure how it's gonna work with the most, like oldest Raspberry Pi Zero, but from the videos I saw online, other people's using the similar setup, but not dual gaming, but more like an access USB storage devices via network. And they haven't mentioned any complaints inside the videos. So, and they're probably running wired connection anyway. But I am basically pushing right now, this is this via Wi-Fi, my Raspberry Pi Zero 2W is connected via Wi-Fi. And I, can't notice any input latency or lag. Obviously, I'm not the best driver. This is for me just to casually drive around and just have some fun on our track. It's not like I'm gonna go and start competing in a sim racing competitions, but this is fun, it works, and it is almost for free, as long as you have Raspberry Pi computer. So, uh, I'm probably not gonna finish this lap. I'm already like crashing like hell, but here we go, steering wheel, as I said, the force feedback does work. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about this setup. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.